The fact that there's something called a sexual parasite and its scientific name isn't Nick Fuentes is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. It's truly surprising that being a sexual parasite is actually how some anglerfish mate and not something that Donald Trump gave to Stormy Daniels. Also, quick shout out, I always appreciate when followers send me stuff because they appreciate my content and the owner of Black Day and Coffee out in Oakland, California sent me coffee. That has really been helping me stay, you know, caffeinated enough to keep going in this existential crisis we all live in. It's really good coffee and they seem like really good people. So, you know, thank you to them. Uh, I, I drink a lot of coffee, so it's always appreciated. Anyway, the anglerfish is a deep sea fish. Genuinely, you know, the stuff of nightmares. Tim Burton could not have come up with this thing. And while the fish is simultaneously fascinating and horrifying, it's also mystifying because it lives at billionaire squisher depths and it makes it really hard to study. And until recently, one of those mysteries has been how does the anglerfish find love? And even though the saying goes there's plenty of fish in the sea, that's not exactly true for their part of the sea. In fact, life is so sparse that deep that the only place you're less likely to find a mate is on John McKente's Date Right app. But it's been discovered that despite their grotesque appearance, some species of anglerfish can actually be a bit of a romantic. Or creepily clingy. The line, you know, can sometimes sometimes be blurry. Either way, they decided that in marriage, till death do us part wasn't long enough and two souls becoming one wasn't literal enough. And when a male anglerfish is lucky enough to find a mate after spending most of its life feeling around in the dark for one, it is not about to let her go ever. A male anglerfish will swim up to the much larger female and bite her on the belly. The saliva releases enzymes that dissolve her skin and then their tissues fuse together and they become one like a somehow less and more creepy human centipede. It looks like this. That little thing hanging off the bottom there is the male. Eventually they start sharing a bloodstream and the male will lose some of his organs and his eyesight. And then he's just along for the ride for the rest of their lives, providing her sperm when whenever she wants it. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, that's that's creepy information I never needed to know. And, uh, and you're welcome. But before you get too mad about the mental image, this could potentially have some really positive impacts for humanity. See, now despite us seeming so different, anglerfish and us are both vertebrates. And, and evolutionarily speaking, we have a lot of things in common. You see, all vertebrates have a somewhat similar immune system that uses things like antibodies to detect foreign invaders and attack them. Or so we thought. So the school of thought before this discovery was that certain parts of our immune system were fundamentally linked to survival and vertebrates could not survive without it. And it makes sense. This has been the key to evolutionary success across millions of species and we've seen no exception to the rule. After all, without it, bacteria and viruses would have made us extinct long ago and things like vaccines wouldn't work. So it's a good thing that we've had it in most cases. But occasionally this immune superpower we have becomes our kryptonite. There's immune system disorders that cause our immune systems to attack healthy cells. And if you ever need an organ transplant, your immune system goes from being your best friend to your worst enemy. Your immune system will often recognize a transplanted organ as a foreign body that is dangerous and attack it. This is called organ rejection. And to fight it, you need to take a lot of anti-rejection medications that suppress your immune system. And even then there's no guarantee they work. So now when you apply that to the anglerfish, when they mate, that's quite obviously a foreign body getting real close and personal with the immune system. And any vertebrate immune system that we understand would reject that male immediately. Immediately. But apparently the anglerfish decided it would trade in what we thought was an essential part of its immune system so it could pursue this weird kink. Anglerfish that exhibit this type of mating behavior have the ability to suppress their own immune systems and some of them don't have any antibodies at all. And yet they survive just fine. So by studying their genome to figure out what allows them to survive and thrive without the important pieces of an immune system we thought were fundamental to survival, we could potentially develop gene therapy for people that would prevent organ rejections altogether, maybe help treat immune disorders, and allow people with suppressed immune systems to potentially be more protected from viruses and infections. Now this is obviously a very long ways off, but it does have the potential to save countless lives. And it also has the potential to revolutionize the way that we understand biology as a whole and the way that our own immune systems work. And the fact that a freaky fish's fornication is forcing us to fathom a far-fetched future of phenomenal pharmaceuticals, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.